In terms of causes of IBS, I'll be honest, we don't have a clear cause as of yet, but with uh, research into the microbiome, we're able to uh, see changes in patients suffering from IBS and the general population. So extremely rarely there are uh, genetic mutations that have been found in IBS, and IBS can run in families such as family clusters, uh, family history of IBS, but there's no clear mutation that is found outside of uh, research, and these are very rare. More frequently, though, is post-infectious IBS, so either a foodborne illness from going to a restaurant or maybe even getting a parasite while you're on vacation and uh, trekking somewhere. So these infections in the GI tract can cause inflammation at the gut level and maybe instigate the immune system, and then you have post-infectious IBS. So that's about 15% of patients with IBS that have a post-infectious history. Other causes uh, of IBS would be changes in the microbiome. So we've noticed that patients with IBS have changes in their colonic flora. So when we analyze their stool, we see that their bacteria are actually different. They have less beneficial bacteria than the general population. And they have products of fermentation that are uh, at a bigger amount than the general population. So when you eat resistant starches and soluble fibers, these products are then absorbed uh, in, the, in the colon, and then the bacteria will then eat them and then ferment them and then produce fatty acids that are called short-chain fatty acids. And these short-chain fatty acids are good to nourish the colon and if you're low in short-chain fatty acids, you're at risk for certain Ill illnesses like Crohn's disease. But patients with IBS tend to have more short-chain fatty acids than the general population, and that could maybe irritate the gut uh, and cause microinflammation and pain. So also we've done studies on doing uh, endoscopies throughout the entire GI tract, and we've done some aspirates and some cultures, and we've noticed that patients with IBS tend to have different populations of bacteria and a greater amount of bacteria. So patients with IBS tend to have a microbiome, at least a bacterial population that is different than the general population. Other things that is associated with IBS is psychiatric illness, such as um, anxiety, depression, fibromyalgic, uh, fibromyalgia, uh, chronic fatigue. So these entities are often associated with uh, IBS, but I would like to note that they're not necessarily um, initiators of IBS because at least 50%, if not more, of patients note that their gut pain happened before they developed the anxiety, before they developed the chronic pain. So uh, also when we're analyzing patients with IBS, we have to uh, also know that there, there can be a lot of variability in microbiome and the science isn't there just yet. So I can't sit here and tell you, you need to eat more broccoli and take more zinc to help your microbiome. Right now we're at the learning stage and learning the differences and hopefully in the future, we'll be able to change the microbiome with specific type of medications, antibiotics, or specific types of food in order to change the microbiome and, um, you know, heal patients from IBS. In the treatment uh, section, I'm going to discuss a specific microbiome uh, targeted treatment for it.